with winter finally receding, spring has either sprung or it's very close. And while a select few plants are long since in the ground and kind of taking care of themselves, the planning and preparation that we do right now is what's going to determine our summer success later on. So before we can break out our tried and trusty garden tools for the year and crack into all those seed packets that we've been eyeing up, we need to get a few tasks done first. Eight in fact, and today we'll cover them all. Hi, I'm Jeff from the Ripe Tomato Farms. You know, I'd love nothing more than to get these tomatoes out into the garden, into the ground, or even plant some of these seeds. But before we can do any of that, like we just said, we got a checklist of tasks that we gotta do first. A huge part of successful gardening is timing, especially when you're dealing with defined finite seasons like where I live. The preparation that we can do in the down times of the year can be such a key in leveling up our gardening game, it can't be ignored. So for now, while these guys wait patiently in the greenhouse and these guys sit tight in their seed packets, let's go through my checklist of eight spring chores that we need to do to get ready for the season. The garden is waiting and these eight tasks are gonna fill up an entire video. So we best get to it. And our first task is weeding, with right now being literally the best time to do this. With their roots barely established and the flowers and seed pods nowhere in sight, right now is as good a time as any to start tackling the weeds. Now, in my opinion, over the dormancy of winter, weeds are just fine. I don't mind them at all. They protect the soil, as well as keep the top layers of the profile healthy and active. Basically, we can use them as a built-in cover crop. That said, now is the time to grow our vegetables, and most of our crops hate competition. There's a reason that we space our plants so diligently, so perfectly. They don't want to compete with each other, but they also don't want to compete with a ton of weeds. So right now, is the perfect time to get rid of them. Cleaning and preparing our beds now, that's gonna save us a ton of work in the future. Right now is the perfect window of time when most of our weeds can be simply plucked up without too much soil disturbance. I'm all about limiting the damage that we do to our soils at any time of the year. So for a complete gardening cleanup tutorial, check out that video right there. Next up, we have amending. With the weather warming, our composts are ramping up. Right now is the single best time to top dress our existing beds with a fresh layer of compost to revitalize the spent areas of the garden. Adding in valuable organic matter and slow release nutrients, composts will also inoculate your garden soils with tons of beneficial bacteria and microbes. I have no doubt that every single garden out there can be made even better with the addition of some compost. On top of that, there's other slow release amendments that you can use as well, such as rock phosphate and alfalfa meal. Spend the time and recharge your gardens now and they'll reward you in the future. And while we're here, late winter, early spring is the perfect time to be pruning your berries, such as these raspberries here. For new growers, Pruning your berry bushes can be a daunting task. Blackberries, grapes, and of course these raspberries here are made much easier when you prune in the spring. The issue is primacanes, the first year vegetative shoots, and fluoracanes, the second year fruiting and flowering shoots, occur on the plant at the same time. This means that while the main bush is perennial and comes back every year, the shoots themselves are biennial. And it's the proper cleanup and maintenance of these shoots that's going to give you optimal growth and thus the best harvests. So if you've left the pruning over winter because you found it too difficult to tell the shoots apart, no worries. Right now is a great time to do it. With only the shoots we want to keep in full sprout, it's easy to tell which ones not to cut. This next one could be much more work than you bargained for. And that's going through and inspecting all your raised beds 
for damage. Rotten sides, pulled apart corners, or damage from simple wear and tear should all be dealt with right now before we even think about planting. You really want to get these kind of repairs done before the craziness of the season. Not to mention, for more serious repairs, you might have to do this anyway, as those beds are often unplantable. Just as our garden beds need repairs, so do our tools. Take stock of what's rusted, dull, or even broken. Sometimes if we're lucky, a simple oiling, tightening, or even sharpening is enough to bring an old tool back to life. Right now is a great time to get that done because if that tool is not repairable, if you can't fix it, you give yourself enough of a window to go out and buy a new one. This time of the year does see their prices at an all-time high, but in just a few short weeks, there might be none available. All this talk about fixing, repairing, and maintenance seems like a lot of work to me. How about some planting? I realize for the most part we tend to focus on vegetables, how to grow them, how to harvest them, but lately I've really been turning my attention to the importance of flowers. Not only do they add a bunch of color to the garden and in general look spectacular, they help me with one of my number one missions right now, and that's to provide food and refuge for pollinators. A great low cost way to get an abundance of flowers in the spring was to plant all our bulbs back in the fall. Obviously, the time for that has passed, but like many other things in gardening, we get a second chance. And by that, I mean summer bulbs. Back in the fall, we planted our spring favorites, things such as crocuses, daffodils, and tulips. With the weather warming up and those guys already in full bloom, it's time to plant our summer bulbs. We're talking about things such as gladiolus, dahlias, and begonias. Oh yeah, and don't forget those lilies. Planted in the early spring for a summer bloom, summer bulbs are something I'm really looking forward to this year. Okay, back to the beds. If you were lucky enough to plan and plant ahead last fall, you may have grown a cover crop. Cover crops are grown over winter to protect your garden, specifically the soil. These can be things such as alfalfa, clover, and my personal favorite, fall rye. Their main function is to produce an amazing blanket of soil protection and they're the ultimate growth hack for the modern backyard gardener. Cover crops do a laundry list of good things for us. They help to eliminate soil erosion, improve that soil health, choke out weeds, prevent pest and disease, and increase biodiversity, all within a single dormancy season when you wouldn't be growing anything anyway. So, after growing for a few months, right now is the time to remove your cover crops. You'll want to do this before the jointing and seeding stages, and it's pretty simple. Just cut the whole crop right down to the soil level, and the beds are ready for planting. Pretty amazing stuff, and you'll see the benefits of a cover crop within a single year. And finally, back to our plants, and our final of the eight spring gardening tasks is to harden off all of our young plants and seedlings. If you're like me and you have a limited summer growing window, likely you start some or all of your seeds early indoors. We do this over winter to not only get that great head start, but also to extend that short growing season for the crops that need it, like these peppers here. In stable, near perfect conditions, of course, all of these plants are gonna respond well. Indoors, the plants grow fast, almost too fast sometimes. Because despite their impressive size, these plants are nowhere near ready to go out into the garden. Yes, they may look big and strong, but living that cushy indoor life for the last two months, these guys are nowhere near tough enough. They need to be acclimated gradually and slowly to the change in the outside conditions, namely, temperature fluctuations, increased light intensity, and infinitely more airflow. It's quite easy to do, but it can take upwards of two weeks start to finish. For a complete tutorial explaining the whole thing, check out that video right there. Yep, 
That's a good list of chores for our spring garden. Too much to take in all at once. So let's recap those main points to help it all soak in. If it feels like spring gardening is all about the preparation, well, that's because it probably is. Weeding and amending our soils is just good business right now. And pruning our berries and grapes, along with bed inspection, knows no better time. On top of that, our gardening tools are gonna be soon needed, so oiling and sharpening them right now is just what the doctor ordered. Right before winter, if we were lucky, or as I like to say smart, we planted our spring bulbs. And if we want to extend that floral tapestry, right now is when we plant the summer varieties. Get them in the ground and help a pollinator out. Now, speaking of planting ahead, we also may have planted cover crops last fall. If so, right now is the perfect time to cut them down. You don't ever want them to go to seed or much past the jointing stage. Cut them right down to the soil level and your beds are ready for planting. Finally, as temperate growers with well-defined, albeit short growing seasons, if we started any of our seedlings early indoors, well, we gotta start thinking about hardening them off. The process takes about two weeks, so knowing that, count backwards from your desired planting date. That old saying is true. A gardener's work is never done. Take it from someone who knows that all too well. But if we time it right, sometimes we can work smarter instead of harder, saving us a ton of effort in the process. Whew. Hopefully today, one or more of these tasks resonates with you and your spring gardening work. But if you have other must-do chores on your list, feel free to leave a comment down below. In the meantime, guys, happy gardening, and I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.